Hey, what's going on, y'all? So today I just wanted to make a quick little video and just talk about something that's been kind of on my mind, do a little bit of a rant, um, which I never really do. But what I wanted to talk about is, and there's really a question that I want to pose to our major keyboard manufacturers, Roland, Yamaha, Korg. Um, why is it that we cannot get more polyphony in our units today. That's not I just something I don't understand. With all the processing power that is available out there in processing, in processors, in our chipsets and whatnot, why are we still dealing with the same type of polyphony issues we were dealing with 20 or more years ago? I mean, it really, it really makes no sense to me. Um, in the year 2000, I believe it was the year 2000, I purchased a Roland XV3080 sound module, and that sound module had 128 voice polyphony, right? And I was happy at the time because I was coming from 64 voices, now to have 128, it was a major thing for me, right? 128 voice polyphony. All right, so fast forward to just a few days ago. I was uh, just putting down some ideas, you know, getting some ideas for some upcoming performances and stuff that I had. Uh, I was just using a preset drum pattern out of my Yamaha Montage, um, and uh, and I was playing, you know, just playing some music. And I had a piano and a pad on the keyboard set up, and I had notes and stuff that were dropping out, right? Notes dropping out on a keyboard that came out, you know, 16, 17 years after the Roland XV 3080. Now, mind you, I only had two sounds layered together and uh, some drums, and I was running into polyphony issues. Now, I do understand, the, you know, the various workarounds and stuff like that that you can use when it comes to the Yamaha Montage. It has two different sound engines, an FMX sound engine, AWM2 sound engine, and, uh, you know, 128 voice polyphony, um, per sound engine, right? So I could maybe try to pick a pad or something out of the FMX sound engine to reduce the strain on the AWM2 sound engine, right? That's something that, hey, that I could technically do. Um, I could always go in, instead of using multi-part sounds, I could use single-part sounds, and that's gonna greatly reduce the amount of polyphony that's being used, reduce the amount of strain that is on the unit. Okay, excellent. So different, you know, things that you can compromise and things that you can do so that notes aren't cutting out, right? But what ends up happening is now you don't have the sound you want, right? Now, I mean, yeah, the piano that I was using was a four-part piano sound. That's the way they build their sounds in the Yamaha. It was a four-part piano sound, and yes, it uses quite a bit of polyphony. Um, but it was the sound that I actually wanted. It sounded amazing. But now I can't use this amazing sound that I want to use, right? I can't use it because, hey, you know, you're running out of polyphony. So pick another piano. Uh, you know, why are we doing this in 2022, right? Now, mind you, I'm just using all of the sounds that I'm using. Are, they're all coming from the AWM2 sound engine. All the sounds are coming from the same exact sound engine. Um, and I only get 128 voices, essentially the same amount of voices that I got in the Roland XV3080 in the year 2000. Like that makes no sense to me considering how technology has advanced. Like we shouldn't be dealing with the same issues. Uh, I ran into issues playing the, the Roland, um, the Phantom O in live performance, just playing a song, a piano and a pad using a supernatural piano and polyphony issues, notes and stuff are cutting out. Yes, I know there's workarounds and different things that you could do, uh, but you know, I'm running into polyphony issues. It just seems like polyphony issues should really, truly be a thing of the past. So I just don't understand what's going on with these manufacturers, why we can't get more processing power so that we can do it. Now there's gonna be people who say, well, I never run into any polyphony issues. The polyphony is fine for me. I don't have any issues. Everything is fine. Everything is great. You know, I have the Roland Phantom and the Roland Phantom, the Zencore sound engine. It's 256 voices and that's enough for me and so on and so forth. First of all, let's address the whole 256 voices in the Roland Zencore sound engine. That is true, it's 256 voice polyphony. But in the Roland Zencore sound engine, you can only play the minimum amount of notes you can play using the Zencore sound engine is two notes. You cannot play one note, and you cannot note voice. 
You cannot play one voice using a Zencore sound engine. If you go all the way down to use one partial, just one partial and hit one note, you are using two voices. So you can't do any less than two, which means now you gotta divide the 256 and half, and really what you're dealing with is 128 voices. And so when they put down, oh, it's 256 voice polyphony, that's something they put down on paper so that it looks good on paper. But in actual practice, you're it's like working with 128 voices. It's it's no different. You know, you can look at the Yamaha montage, and on paper they're gonna say it's got 256 voice polyphony. Yeah, that's when you add both sound engines together. In my particular case, I was only using one sound engine. So when you're using one sound engine, then now you're using 128 voice polyphony. Same amount of polyphony that I was using in the year 2000. It is now 2022. It doesn't make any sense. Now, the Dexibel Vivo S9, you can go look at the specs yourself. The Vivo S9 shows that it has an unlimited polyphony, has a processor in there, a processor in there that gives you an unlimited polyphony and it gives you up to 320 oscillators that you can play all at once. And that's a stage piano coming from not one of the major manufacturers out there, that's coming from Dexabel, right? And it's the same price point as the Roland Phantom and the same price point as, you know, the Yamaha Montage is right in there with all of the other like flagship keyboards and whatnot. And it's giving you an unlimited polyphony and it's not even a workstation. It's not even a piano or a keyboard that's made to play a whole bunch of tracks and stuff. And you know, it's that's not even really made to do that. And yet they give you an unlimited polyphony. I just don't understand why we don't have processors like that in our other flagship, our other flagship keyboards. I really, I really don't get it. With all the technology and stuff that's out there, it's like, what are they doing? Just not giving us that kind of polyphony because they're saving money and increasing their profit margins. Like we have keyboards costing, you know, four thousand dollars, and really in practice. When you start laying down drums, piano, bass, guitar, you know, then you start running into polyphony issues. And I just, once again, <laughs> I just don't understand. Now, of course, there's gonna be people that be like, hey, I never get any polyphony issues and whatnot. And, the, and the, the fact of the matter is, it depends on the style of music or the genre of music that I'm playing. If I'm playing music from the 80s, where I'm using a bunch of basic synthesizer sounds and stuff like that, like in some Michael Jackson music or something like that, something that came out of a Jupiter 80, and it's just a you know some real basic synth sounds, some basic string sounds or synth string sounds or something, uh, basic three note, maybe four note chords or something, uh, you know, a really basic drum beat that doesn't have a whole lot of different percussion in it. Yeah, I don't run into any kind of polyphony issues when I'm playing that type of music. But when I'm playing what's called CCM music, contemporary Christian music, where you have a whole lot of pads and stuff droning in the background and, and um, uh, chords and stuff that are being held out, like notes, piano notes that are just being held out and sustained forever, uh, yeah, I'm running into polyphony issues. Or if I'm trying to record something and I got 13 different tracks and a whole bunch of stuff going on, I start running into polyphony issues. So you can't really use the keyboard oftentimes as advertised because the polyphony is a bottleneck. And I just don't know why we can't just get past that and not be dealing with the same polyphony issues and trying to implement the same kind of workarounds that I would implement over 20 years ago. So anyway, that's my rant. You can let me know what you think in the comments. Maybe you're not running into any polyphony issues, but I run into it constantly. I'm constantly taking two keyboards and stuff with me to make sure that I don't have those kind of issues. But it just seems like today, hey, you know, if I hook up my iPad and play using my iPad, there's no polyphony issues. If I'm using my computer and VSTs, there's no polyphony issues. Um, and my iPad that I have is not the latest and greatest. It's one of the older ones or whatever. No kind of polyphony issues ever using that kind of a thing. I can lay down tracks and do whatever I want to do. No kind of polyphony issues. We need to up the game in these keyboards and give keyboard players more power so they're not running into that bottleneck. Especially when we were paying $4,000 or more, you know, depending on what you're buying, for these flagship keyboards, we shouldn't be running into these issues that we would have had 20 years ago. Anyway, that's my rant. Let me know what you think in the comments. You guys have a good day.